Hello everybody and welcome to my lab. My name is Scott Card and this is the second installment in our how-to series of videos for Proteus. Today I want to talk to you about setting up generators and power rails for simulation and for your schematic capture. All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, so, uh, if you didn't, if you didn't see the first video on uh, on how to how to create uh, the circuit, you can you can uh, click the link above and and follow it if you want to uh, if you want to make exactly what we have here. But today we're going to we're going to expand on this. And what we want to do is we want to uh, take a look first at our power rail. And understand where it's coming from and then look at a more a realistic uh, real-world situation that we would have where we may want an LED okay and so this first uh, this first thing here it's our, our power it came from over here uh, under terminals our power right here and so what is that uh, if we double click on it uh, you'll notice that it's it's not listed as anything really. It's just our generic power. And so in order to understand the power net, the power rail, what we need to do is we need to go under uh, design and configure power rails. In here we have uh, the ability to, to uh, manipulate our uh, both our ground, our VEE, and our VCC and VDD. Uh, we can also create new ones and we'll, we're going to circle back around to that in a second uh, but we can simply uh, change the value here and it will change the the outcome on all of our power nets for example if i set this to 2.5 volts and say okay and run my simulation uh, you'll note that uh, it only goes up to 2.5 volts and so this is this is really handy when we have a voltage in our system that is is not five volts. Perhaps your your VCC is three point three for the entire design. Then we could just go in and again change this uh, to three point three. And today we're we're going to leave it at five uh, because we're going to we're going to look at um, another tool. And the tool that we want to play around with is uh, different signals. Okay, so uh, it's simple enough to to bring in a, a plain DC voltage. I mean, there's several ways we could do it. We could, uh, like I say, use the the power rail. We could bring in a battery, or we could go over here to generators and choose a DC signal. The DC signal again uh, is is going to be something that is easily set and these are typically only used for simulation okay so if I double click on it uh, the first thing is you're going to see that there's actually a bunch of different types of uh, generators so if you pick one and you want to change it later you can uh, but there's one thing that I've asked of all my students and that's to uh, not hide the properties and this allows us to actually look at uh, what's happening uh, with with the uh, simulation so here you can see that it actually says that it's 5.1 volts and when I run the simulation it's it's uh, yeah it's only three millivolts off but less than that uh, and and that helps us in troubleshooting but we can also do something like put in a sine wave and sine waves are a great way for us to simulate uh, what we would get out of the wall or out of a transformer. And so in this case, uh, we're, we have an amplitude. And note that it's amplitude and not peak to peak and not RMS. Right? We can switch between them. Okay, So this is going to, to peak at 1 volt. Okay, And uh, we can actually run our simulation now. And we can see that it oscillates. But what does this actually look like? Well, the next thing that I should show you here is uh, some of our measuring tools. And so these are our measuring devices over here. And so we can actually take an oscilloscope 
and put it on here to look at what's happening with our signal. Okay. And so here's our oscilloscope running. And uh, there doesn't appear to be a whole lot. So uh, we're going to turn off what we don't need. And we'll set it over to DC. I'll center it. I just double click on the, uh, the radio button here to center it. And we can adjust uh, the X and the Y position so that we can see our peak. And so at half a volt per division, so half one, we're seeing plus one and minus one. And that's, that's fantastic. So we'll stop our simulation here and we'll give it some more amplitude. Why don't we take this up to uh, five volts? So this will be uh, peak to peak 10 volts. So we definitely see that LED turn on and off. Fantastic. It's uh, reacting exactly the way a diode should. And now word of caution, if you did this in the real world, that diode would likely uh, be destroyed because the reverse breakdown voltage is not uh, high enough to, to withstand that. Right? So for example, the breakdown voltage at four volts. All right, so what do we need to do? Uh, we would need to put in a diode. So let's go ahead and we're going to grab another component here. And in this case, I'm going to pick a very specific diode. I would like a 1N4148. Probably the most ubiquitous diode in the world. All right, and we'll drop this guy in. And now when we run it, if you recall before we had a full sine wave, now we, when we run our simulation, we see a rectified uh, signal. And so here's our zero volts. And we're looking at, uh, here we go, one volt per division. So one, two, and a little bit, and then it peaks up. And we can see that the capacitors are charging and then slowly discharging. All right. And so this is fantastic so far. So what happens when we crank this up to uh, 60 hertz? Well, we do have some ripple, uh, but it's it's pretty good. It's pretty solid, right? We're, we're able to see uh, that if we sw switch this over to AC and turn our, our amplitude up, slow this guy down, we can see that we do have some ripple, but it's in the uh, peak, peak to peak, we'll call it 100 um, millivolts. And so for this load, that seems quite reasonable. Let's uh, let's take this one step further, and we're going to we're going to put in a bit of a load. So let's let's grab our resistor here, and we're going to drop in a resistor again, plus and minus. Great way to uh, rotate parts around. And let's say that we want to draw a hundred milliamps through this, and so uh, we saw uh, the breakdown voltage here of two point two. <clears throat> so uh, 2.2 volts, we want 100 milliamps. Uh, no, it's not quite going to work out. We'll, we'll have to come up here, won't we? So we bypass all of that. So we're looking at uh, 5 volts uh, and 100 milliamps. So again, grab my calculator here. So 5 volts divided by 100 milliamps means that I need 50 ohms. Okay, so change this guy to 50 ohms and we'll grab a current probe on here and so we can see uh, what's happening with our current and we'll run our simulation and we can see this time that we're getting a much more ripple it's not horrible but it's uh, it's still there our, our voltage is is not quite right uh, you'll notice that we're our RMS voltage is down, so that's what we're really looking at here, not our peak. And here we go, we'll change this back so we can take a look at what's happening with our peak. So one, two, three, four, four volts. Yeah, it's not quite, it's not quite enough, is it? And so let's, uh, let's stop, stop our simulation here and uh, consider what we can do to improve the efficiency of our power supply. 
And the quick and easy thing would be to uh, turn it into a full bridge rectifier. Okay, so I'm just going to grab four diodes here and wire them up into a bridge. Like so. Uh, but uh, where do we grab our second phase from? And so here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this guy and we'll connect him to this side. And what we need to do is we need to put him 180 degrees out of phase and cut the amplitude uh, in half, so 2.5, 2.5. And the reason for that is uh, if we measure the voltage between this rail and this rail, we'll still see a full five volts. It's just now split across two, uh, two, two lines. There's uh, one more thing that we'll need to do, and that's to connect our our negative uh, rail. And you'll notice that if we if we actually just connect this like so, and we run our simulation, we don't get results that we we would quite expect. You'll notice that uh, we're still we're still quite low. Uh, we've got uh, a very small voltage here. In this case, only 1.5 volts. And so, you know, you're scratching your head, you're thinking, well, if if this is plus five and this is minus five, then I should see, or sorry, 2.5 and 2.5, I should see five volts. And normally you would, but uh, the problem is that Proteus considers this zero volts. So what we've effectively done is created a short from our negative 2.5 volts right to ground. And so if I get rid of that, and I drop in a second probe, in this case, I will put a voltage probe here, and we run our simulation. Now we can see that we have uh, plus 1.5 and minus 1.5. And, uh, you know, we're able to see uh, reference to zero volts. Yeah, indeed, we do have 1.5. But if we use another tool, uh, perhaps the uh, DC voltmeter here, and put it across our load, we'll see that we do have actually double the voltage. And so, yes, indeed, we see uh, 3.2, which is uh, du double, double what we're seeing here. So the plus and the minus indeed add up. Uh, which brings us to the next point. We actually wanted five volts. We didn't want uh, this, this, uh, this lower voltage. And the reason that we're getting the lower voltage is because we are actually looking at an amplitude. And so this root mean squared or RMS actually comes into play for exactly exactly this, this uh, situation. So here we are, if we call out a 2.5 volts RMS and we run our simulation, then indeed we do get our five volt output. And the other thing that we can do is we can uh, take a look at how the current is flowing through through our circuit here as well. And uh, so here we go. We'll grab a current here and a current here, and we can run our simulation and see uh, exactly how the current is passing uh, through our our circuit. Okay. Uh, fantastic. So, the uh, as far as the current, though, the the one thing that, uh, and I'm not going to get into into this a whole lot, uh, but I do want to show you what's happening here. Uh, when we when we look at what's happening with the current, you'll notice that uh, when we first turn our circuit on, uh, we do get this huge uh, spike coming in. Uh, the red and the green are our positive and negative currents. And so uh, after, after those capacitors, uh, those huge capacitors are charged the first time, we see a small uh, current spike as, as it charges them up. And then this voltage decrease as, it, as, it's, uh, as it's dissipating. And so here the yellow is our input sine wave. And we're able to correlate everything that we see uh, happening in this circuit. And so... Uh, do stay tuned. We're going to get into actually running some of these uh, simulations and graphing uh, what's happening. Okay, so 
uh, that's that's uh, that little teaser for our our next video. All right. Uh, if you enjoyed this, uh, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, uh, your comments are definitely appreciated uh, below. And uh, do do think about subscribing if you'd like to see more of these videos or be uh, notified uh, on upon uh, delivery of new content. Okay. Thanks and have a great day.